103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, August 16th, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. You got the touch! That's all I know about the song, but it's okay. <laughs> I don't know that song. Uh, oh, it's a good song. It's a good song. It's a good it's song. It's probably because I'm so old. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> today's guests are Dread Pirate Higgs, Wave, when yeah, there you go, George, and Red Leader. Why um, don't we get drunk? Oh, okay. Uh, also good. a good song. Good. <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. It's a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, God, holy books, and superstition. By the way, uh, this is our 190th show. Wow. So we're closing on 200 shows now, a couple more months. If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll tell you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in video slash TV show broadcasting here in Knoxville? That's that has correct. been for 10 years. Did you know that, Wombat? Yes. So the fight was the heavyweight women's oh, MMA you're, championship. You're, you're, it was Linda the Slicer stopping, stopping. Mitchell getting versus oh, I, I like Amanda, <laughs> Amanda the Punch Metal Fist Lady no. Branson. So and they were fighting for a long time until an eye poke happened, unfortunately, in the 17th round, and the, be- the belt went back to the reigning champion. Nope. Nope. I think it'll be nope. a really great yeah. competition if they did it over again. You're After not gonna, 200 he, shows, he still does He still it? hasn't found it's, the TV I'll, show yet. I'm just saying pay-per-view is expensive that's all so you just take what yeah, you can get it is yeah. but yeah it's not on pay-per-view yeah. anyway we'll I tell you know more about you're... how you can connect with it and maybe wombat will really pay attention when we tell them uh, but that'll be after the show break as well if you'd like to interact with us during the show go to facebook and search for our digital free thought radio our page and you can use the messaging function to send us questions or comments uh, what do you have for us today or wombat Today we're going to be talking about the more things change, the more things stay the same, specifically with uh, science versus religion. And we're going to see which things change the most and which things stay the same the most. But before we go into it, I throw it up to our our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our daily or weekly invocation. To the few that I knew in the pew who aren't too much enthused with this view, I agree on the odds against all other gods, but conclude there's one fewer than you. Mm. Hey, before we go into the topic today, Dredd, how you been? How's Canada life? Canada and life in Canada is, is good. Uh, you know, we've got this Corona thing uh, under control. Uh, nice. And, um, you know, we count in the hundreds. Uh, wow you know, uh, people that have died as opposed to thousands and in BC here. So, uh, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're doing pretty good. Good job. Good job. And that takes a, that's a community effort too. So that's definitely yeah. not something that should just be glossed over. That's, that's a yeah. good, and, and, and as you can see, my, my, ship, my, my, my ship is still afloat. So, yeah, but it seems to be going in circles. I don't know what's going on here. Like, am I, <laughs> 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 right. Anyway, I, 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 I missed my mortgage payment. <laughs> you can't go ashore yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um george you got a nice pack on what's going on there i thought uh sergio your recovery was going pretty well it is going pretty well i i just got carried away this morning with my exercises I, i'm yeah. doing range of motion exercises after surgery <clears throat> and uh... i confess I am in love with my occupational therapists oh there's drama here I... which one you have five you... of them well, believe it or not, halfway where I am, halfway between Knoxville and Chattanooga. Yeah. Out here in the Boonie Land, uh, my I have an occupational therapy assistant who lives in the next village, and she reads the New York Times every day. Ah. Uh, now that is really super. 
That's I great. Think. That's great. Yeah. I, I, I love is blooming. Keep us updated. Dale, yeah. you got yeah. this weird statue. You know, we're going to have to go over it. What's going on? Also, you're holding your cup, but you're not holding it with the part where you're supposed to hold the cup. Now I'm confused. All right. Two things. First statue. What's going on here? Well, as you said, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Mm. This is a statue I did to uh, commemorate an incident that happened in uh, uh, in Tennessee. Uh oh, it's he, okay. He did warn that uh, there might be some kind of an issue. Uh, it's fine. It's a haunted statue, so that's what's going on here. Drop. I think so what we're basically saying is it has the power to freeze time. The statue has the power yeah. to freeze time well, whenever Dale, anyone tries your, to talk about it. Your Dale, your image and sound have frozen. That's true. Uh, we'll go. We'll throw it up to Larry, though. Hey, Larry, how you been? What's up, what's life like in the booth? Slash, not really in the booth, but slash, kind of in the booth. Anyway? I'm doing fine. It's just yeah, staying in, staying safe. I saw a uh, funny meme on the internet yesterday. It says, it says uh, "Meantime with well, Larry, let's go." Yeah, yeah, yeah. We well, we can't go outside. We can't do anything. We have to stay home, stay stay safe. And then the bottom part has a person who just got off home arrest, and he's looking at the camera going. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's, yeah. he's still under house arrest uh, no matter whether he's off it or not oh, I, think I can feel yeah, it. You're, you're back with us now dale yeah dale dale yeah, just joined the conversation no you're fine it's not you we uh, lost you we lost you to commemorate this. yeah what's the statue about any did you hear the part about crump no, no. here's the tr okay. trump dump let's go no, not Trump. Crump. This is oh, yeah, interesting. Said, the more things change, the more they say the same. In Tennessee, right. there was a political machine headed by a man named Crump. Okay. And what he did was he stole the elections because he would take the ballot boxes, take all the ballots out of them, and put more put other ballots in. You know, and uh, consequently, the townspeople got tired of it one year. And then after the sheriff stole all of the uh, ballot, ballot boxes, boxes. Mm -hmm. ballot boxes yeah. uh, they stole them back. And then they broke the ballot boxes apart in the middle of the street and counted them by the light of cars. When was this, this and where? This was, uh, it's, this was called the Battle of Athens, and it happened in Athens, Tennessee. It right, was right, an yeah. actual battle, too. Um, shooting and all that. Wow. Was this 1949 did this happen? Six. No, 1946, the Battle of Athens. Wow. wow, it, wow. It, it, it was broadcast nationwide because WLA, uh, WLAR was operating at that time, and the battle raged for 12 hours before the ballot boxes were finally retrieved. And what were the results of the vote? Did uh, Crump's well, candidate Crump win? Well, people did not win. Yay. I, that's a happy ending, at least. It makes me feel pretty good. But who's the statue of? Is that Crump, or is it someone who helped to defeat Crump? Well, no. When the, when the call came out, you know, uh, we're going to do something about this, all the citizens took up, some of them took up arms, if somebody left the National Guard armory unlocked, and uh, it was that was how the battle happened. This okay. this represents a farmer who was uh, tired of his vote not getting counted. Got it. Wow. Got it. So yeah, we are coming up into a voting season. I think it's absolutely important that everyone does vote. Very very important that they show up. And um, oh, oh, don't oh. forget the date. Make sure you're registered. And absentee voting is available too. It's the deadline, at least in Tennessee, is October. Dell, what do you got? I uh, my post person came by. My mail carrier came by. A, yeah, a young lady, and mm. I made a point of going out and meeting her and telling her how much I appreciated what she was doing this time, doing during this time of COVID, and how sure. much we needed her during the next election. Right. And she said, "Write your congressman." And I said, "Well, what should I write?" And she said, "Well, uh, that the mail system should not be slowed down." Hmm. It's very true. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot How of people out there. How can they possibly uh, think otherwise? That's what gets me, unless they're colluding with the Republican Party and making uh, this election um, lopsided, mm -hmm. illegal. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I would say, uh, if you can, um, make sure that you are at least aware of your deadlines in the state that you're listening to this in. We have a lot of listeners in Kentucky and Tennessee. I know our absentee voting deadlines in October registration to vote is not up yet. So get yourself out there. Dred, what do you have? Um, well, you had made the comment uh, how important it is to vote. Mm -hmm. um, I would amend that to say it's important to know what you're voting for before you True. vote. Don't just vote for the sake of voting. Because if you don't know the issues, uh, you pay no attention to it, then you're you're essentially wasting um, wasting the opportunity to choose your future uh, through ignorance. So. Right. Well, I I don't want to take voting advice from a pirate from Canada. <laughs> I think you might. <laughs> How many people were dying of COVID too. over there? Oh, you said it was in the hundreds. <laughs> I think it, I think I'd might want to take a little bit of advice from this guy. They have a democracy. Yeah, we have a democracy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get into the main topic of the show. I'm glad everyone's doing well. Uh, so we, I was playing a game since the last week that's basically, uh, what if humanity went, had a catastrophic event that made them go back to cavemen slash hunter-gathering times? And so you're playing as a character who's just raised up in this culture where there's a bunch of like dilapidated buildings, robots, computers, but most people just ignore it so they can gather berries and hunt and, and, and basically live as we used to when we were still nomadic uh, tribes and stuff. The interesting thing is she has a lot of questions. She wants to know what's going on about this world. And she's not satisfied with the answers that people are giving her because everyone in different tribes have different gods. The tribe that she's raised in worships a mountain. They call the mountain All Mother because the mountain provides all the food for them. It ha protects them from the elements, protects them from neighboring villages that try to take stuff from them. It's like the, the mountain has a agency that's designed with them as the number one people and they are the chosen people in this sacred land and then across the mountain there's a tribe that worships the sun and i'm like hey we had people in our past that worship the sun there's people who worship the sun even today we've had people who worship mountains in our past there's probably you know amazonian tribes that worship the land that they're from their ancestors land and stuff like that people who fight over sacred land even today and so it was interesting that you're playing this game that has a lot of illusions and messages for what it's like essentially to live with a understanding that everyone's believing something different, but they can't all be right, right? <laughs> and there's a lot of conflict that, that comes about from it. But what's also interesting is she has a lot of questions about science. She wants to know how things work. What are these machines? What are these rope? Like, how do these metal buildings come about in the first place? And as she tries to figure out the mechanics of science, she does so exactly the same way how we did. Like we understand how electricity works. She figures out exactly the way how mechanics work, how uh, physics works. Like it's all, she's following the same parallels that we're doing and coming to the exact same conclusions we have today. But the religious claims are all spiraling in different directions and breaking down to different um, fractions. And there's the eclipse people who are like, we like the sun, but we don't like the sun that much. We like the sun only on certain days. And we do. We, we do, like the uh, night. <laughs> we like the night. The we moon like is our goddess. There's a moon tribe too. There's a moon tribe too. And they're just like, oh, the sun people are a bunch of jerks. We're just going to worship the night because <laughs> there's less enemies out in the day and we have the cover of night and we're the best people. And then there's a shadow group. And then it's just like so many fractured groups that all think they're right. But everyone who cares about science or like mining or like making metal, all are doing the exact same way we're doing. So I would ask this as a round table. Um, do you think there's validity in the statement? I'm going to start with Dread Pirate. Do you think there's validity in the statement that um, religions tend to, as you, as you look around different cultures, be very different and point in different directions, but science always seems to point in the same direction, almost the same point. Dred, what do you think? Yeah, I'd absolutely agree with that because, uh, you know, science is based on empirical evidence, not whatever you, you fancy is going on in your own imagination. So it's about what's true as opposed to what you want to be true. Mm, true versus what you want to be true. Objectively uh, true. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of in, a, in an object, objective sense, right? Would you say there's a lot of unfortunate truths in science then that you have to face no matter what? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Give me fire, a fire is hot. You know, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. It's yeah. a good thing or a bad thing, depending on 
on the situation you're in. So sure, Larry, what do you have? I'd like I'd like to head off some of the criticism. I know we're going to get in the comments about yeah, but there are a lot, a lot of scientists who disagree with each other about different things, it's and we true. have to say that. To address that, we have to say, yeah, but that's on the frontier of science. Those are the, the breaking edges, of the, the break, icebreakers of science, uh, discovering new things and then disagreeing on how the, uh, the models work, as it were. But on the fundamentals of science, on the basics, the, you know, the, how gravity affects uh, moving bodies, how electrons move, uh, things like that, they're all in agreement. And 99.9% .9 of them agree on evolution. And the mm -hmm. ones that don't are not doing science, they're doing religion. They're, they're, um, they're just taking the word of their holy book uh, over the, the results of uh, verifiable and testing science. Cool. Dale, I'll throw this out at you. Do you think um, there's parallels between religion differentiating or bifurcating versus science always being the same? Um, what's your opinion? Or generally what we've talked about. Could you repeat you have... that question again? Sure. Bifurcation is like when one thing breaks up. No, I know multiple... what bifurcation is. What was the... Could you repeat the question? Sure. Do you think there's a parallel or a, a valid statement behind someone saying religion tends to bifurcate into conflicting points of view, whereas science tends to congregate to a single point of view? Yes. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> Actually, Larry, I liked what you were saying about how scientists do argue. Like, it doesn't mean that science is different things. Like, as, there's a difference between a scientist and science, right? And I think right. part of science is having people who are skilled in their craft converse and debate with each other to try to figure out where the truth lies. Mm -hmm. So when you see yeah, two the, scientists arguing with each other, that's science happening. At yeah, the they're not arguing for argument's sake. They're arguing to reach progress or to progress right. on the subject. They learn from each other. Right. They're fine-tuning. Arguments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, sure. where where are, where are we with nuclear fusion? Pretty good. Yeah. Well, at least we know what I mean, exists and how to control it. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, I, I think that's we've been doing still, it for a while. Uh, no, we're not. We've been doing it for the last fourteen billion years. If you want to claim it on our yeah. part, but yeah, we understand <laughs> it very well. You know. We've understood it for quite a while. Put We've way. understood it for quite a while, and it's been happening for quite a while, too. Uh, we're the to product do it of, in our labs is hard. Doing it in our yeah. labs is, of course, hard. But, hey, um, here's something that's fun. When I was in high school, um, we had globes that had USSR instead of, like, Russia on it. And we had periodic tables that only went up to about 88. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, these things are going to fill out, and these lines that our covering borders are going to change. And, and my friends are like, no, this is how it's always going to be. What are you talking about? This is how it always is. And lo and behold, by the time I got out of college, borders for a lot of stuff, Tehran, Taiwan, all this stuff starts to manipulate and change. And so you have outdated maps. If you log into Google under different um, IPs or VPNs or whatever, or basically tell Google you're from China, the outlines for a lot of stuff looks different around China compared to what it does when you're in USA. And so Google has mm -hmm. to like tip that, walk that line. Also, periodic table now, we have over 100 elements, and we're able to have, like, stable enough elements where we can do, like, really cool assessments on, like, these new, these new components of the universe. And I think that's just a really interesting thing. So I would say, yes, we're pretty good at nuclear fission. It's just the nature of nuclear fission is in itself unstable. George, well, what's, what's your comment? Um, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> do you think religion splits apart? And do you think science, regardless of where you're from in the world, comes together? Oh, absolutely. I mean, my word, where, where I'm living, where I live right now. I mean, bifurcate, Christianity is bifurcated all over the place here in Athens, Tennessee. Oh. There's just so, so many churches that have split off from other churches. It, it, you know, it's walking in front of me, you know. <laughs> and and I, I about the issue, um, I have been walking at the intersection of art and science for almost my entire life. Interesting. Um, you know, um, in the in the sense that I'm a musician by training, and I have worked on musical instruments for a living. I started at the age of six. I took piano lessons, and I had a lousy piano that I kept breaking. So I kept having to fix the piano. And 
this led me into the science that's behind musical instruments. And I can't refute it. I can simply look at it and say, well, the way we tune a piano doesn't make sense. Scientifically, the way we have to tune a piano is to make it a little bit out of tune, but yet in a way that nobody will notice. So strange. in the terms of physics, what's that? Keep going. I said, how strange. Yeah, in terms of in terms of physics, <clears throat> we throw the physics out of kilter to tune the piano properly. And this is the way it's been done since Johann Sebastian Bach. So I have to, what I'm getting at is that I have to live with paradox in my mind because or I've things been that are counterintuitive like counterintuitive concepts. exactly what are they who was it was it Feynman said that uh, physics has no obligation to make sense to you uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good who, I like that. who said that Larry I think it was who, who Feynman, that, Feynman Feynman but uh, I'm yeah. not sure who's offhand. that a who's physicist. Feynman? Yeah. yeah we'll talk about but I do like the idea of like um, there are things that may not necessarily make sense to you but they are still true and science is very good at finding like those things very very good at finding things that are true that don't necessarily make sense to you and mm -hmm. religion is very good at finding things that just make sense to you and it's not interested in the things that are unpalatable in the, in the large sense and they may not necessarily be true and so because of that i just find them wholly underwhelming as things that i want to have in my life dread i think i saw you raising your hand what's up it's it's disappearing uh, in the blue just, screen behind you, but I see it. Yeah, <laughs> just like a phantom. Well, just just to reflect on uh, on George's uh, comment there, um, I I don't know how to tune a piano, but I can tune a fish. Uh, -huh. uh well, he is a dad. He can get away some with some dad ones. <laughs> The, uh, okay. So actually, I thought uh, you, because uh, bifurcation has come up as a term uh, over the last two or three shows. Um, but it doesn't really bifurcate. It's, I, doesn't it polyfurcate? Yeah, but so what this is what I'm seeing is like you have the First Street Baptist Church, and then the pastor comes in with a blue Cadillac, and people are like, I can't believe he has a blue Cadillac. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a blue Cadillac. I'm going to start my own church because this pastor has a blue Cadillac. Next thing you know, you have the Second Street Baptist Church where the pastor <laughs> comes in with a Ford truck, and he's just like, Ford trucks? Come on. Everyone knows Chevy has the best trucks. I'm going to start my own Baptist church. And you have the Third Street Baptist Church for the pastor, and it's so on and so on. And so I'm thinking it's like one main one, and then it just keep splitting 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 to the point where even the main one doesn't they. even fit of course they split up and go crazy but typically it's like it's and just new and start just out of the blue you look at yeah. scientology and uh well there's several but scientology is a good example of it sure go for it george one thing i'd yeah. like to get back to uh is uh, one thing you mentioned in the uh chat before we started was uh if if society was to uh, collapse mm -hmm. uh, societal collapse up into nothing and all of the science books and all the holy books were uh destroyed right some catastrophic uh event right um the we would have all new religions within a thousand years yes but then we would have all the same science exactly at, at the same time <clears throat> you, so the science would be demonstrate demonstrably Demonstrably, Demonstrably. Uh, consistent English is weird. Uh, uh, and refinable, as it were. I think that's exactly what I was trying to make the yeah. point of. Like the video game that I was playing, Horizon Zero Dawn, by the way, is basically if you wipe out all of human society, everyone's going to have a new religion, but the science stays exactly the same. And that way, when I'm like playing the game and I'm like, how do I connect these two things? How does this power work with this power? How can I like make this temper temperature like lower or hotter and stuff like that? It's all the same processes. And the girl who's my main character is using the exact same understanding that I have of science and applying it the exact same way that I would and coming out to the exact same conclusions. But on a religious point of view, I have no idea what to expect when I walk into a new village and everyone's walk dressed around with feathers in their hair. And they're like, how dare you wear feathers? Only slaves wear feathers. And you're like, what? I don't understand that. <laughs> Dread fire. <laughs> uh, one of our viewers here, Min, um, hmm. makes this comment. He says, religion is about metaphysics, spirituality, and poetry. Science explores the natural world through material facts. These two disciplines are apples and oranges. They should never cross each other. So, I, and just to comment on that, I, yeah, I think he's right in the sense that when you ask the question about bifurcation and 
convergence, um, it's because they explore things so differently, you know, hmm. um, they're exploring. Well, they, they don't necessarily do that. I mean, uh, science answers the questions like, where did the sun come from? Where did the earth come from? Where the, what's the heavens like? You know, what are stars? But the Bible does the same thing. They say, God created the sun, created the earth, created the heavens. So they have different answers for the same physical phenomena. So we, they do step on each other's other. time. They do. So Not right. only... Not only that, but why live through life with a double standard? Why have two different standards to explain things when you could have one standard to explain everything? And instead of moving to different standards based on what's convenient for you, you have one great method to figure out what's true from what's not true. And I love right. the idea that science is not about, hey, I'm done. This is perfect. Don't challenge me. It's, it's an mm -hmm. authority given to you, and you don't have to modify it whatsoever. Right. Science is an evolving process. That if we have examples of metaphysical or supernatural entities, the first thing we should do is apply the scientific method to them to figure out, okay, now that these things are real, let's figure out how we can assess them so that way we know what's supernatural and what's not supernatural. What's like the most yeah. supernatural thing, what's the least supernatural? Thing? What kind of sacrifices work yeah. best? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are these gods like? 14 goats, yeah. seven goats? Yeah. We gotta yeah. figure this out, yeah. And things that are not, uh, lend themselves to scientific uh, review, I mean, we have philosophy, which doesn't require metaphysics, doesn't right. require we have superstition, math. but yeah. we can still, have philosophical debates without re resort to uh, magic or supernatural. Exactly, being. and and science is not uh, is not barred off from working with abstract concepts. Like we can try to apply objective measurements to things that are subjective. We can come up with hypothetical models to figure out what the best way is to live. Ethics, mathematics; these are all examples where we rely on empirical data to come out with abstract concepts and it's really or abstract conclusions and it's very very interesting all we need is a well-defined variables larry i think we're at the bottom of the half hour though okay um we're at wozo radio 103.9 lp fm right here in knoxville tennessee and we'll be back right after this you know it's a good thing when i see bumps on my neck and you know, arms rise up to the I'm going to sing with just the weekend, yeah. Do, 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 do. It's a good thing when I'm down. You call and you come around and you keep on coming, yeah. Do, 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 do. You know what? I had my reservations. I know that took some patience. Yes, yes. Oh, 
103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Five. Today is Sunday, August 16th, 2020. Let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. <clears throat> First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just go Google Knoxville Atheist, it should come up. You can also go to meetup.com and search for Knoxville Atheists. By the way, if you live in, if you don't live in Knoxville, excuse me, you can still go to meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. Start one! Start one! <laughs> Everybody was behind me on that one. There's a little bit of lag. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Another large free thinking group in Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, you can find RET at the rationalists.org and click on upcoming events to see what they're all about right now. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about Knoxville's atheist call in TV or video show. It was TV show for 10 years, and now we've gone to streaming online YouTube video. So go to YouTube and search for four words. Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And remember, you can find archives of their past shows on YouTube by searching for Free Thought Forum Knoxville. And if you're involved or like to get involved in this TV or the radio show, come to uh, the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour Facebook page and request uh, more information, or you can go to RET and ask them about being on the TV show. With us today, we have the Wombat. Hey! We have the Joy, um, we don't have Joy. We have um, Dread Pirate Higgs, and George, and Red Leader. And we were talking about science versus religion. Yes, and before we go into that, I want to tell you guys a story. It's kind of dear to my heart. I had a dog and I was walking it at Murray County Park, which is like the park nearby uh, where I like to do my walking of my dogs or so have you. And unfortunately I lost my dog. So I put up a sign and it was at saying, because I named my dog this, where is the love? The love. Where is the, the love? Is the, the love. love. The, love. the love. One day I'll find my dog. Bu- one day I'll find my dog. Okay, love. where's the love? You've right. lost that love and feeling. Oh, that <laughs> love and dog. Yeah. <laughs> That'll work right. too. So uh, we have the comments. Feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube channel and we'll go over it. Thank you so much for the love that you guys are sharing. Um, Tracy Reed had a response to our last video, which was about, do Christians really believe what they say they do? Um, Tracy says, I find that very hard to believe. I mean, I find myself invoking Poe's law quite often under these circumstances. By the way, anyone who's not internet savvy, uh, Poe's law basically means if it's not a winky, if there's not a winky face behind it, it's almost impossible for not someone to take that seriously. So if someone says, Hey, uh, um, recognizing sarcasm or satire satire or what it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to tell what satire is. If there's not like a wiki face behind it, because someone is going to take it seriously. Someone from that group is going to take it seriously. So if someone Mm -hmm. said, Hey, you know, uh, flat earth, exists and that's what that's a common understanding of christianity i think there's even a bible verse of like a guy standing on top of the hill and seeing the entire world or something like that it's jesus and the, and the devil standing on yeah. the mountain and yeah the devil yeah. showing him the entire earth from the top of the mountain. <laughs> right and so a christian could say that in a, in a comment and even mean it sarcastically it's like i can't believe everyone thinks christians all think they're flat earth or like believe in a flat earth but a flat earth would read that and be like oh i believe that what are you talking about so it's like it's hard to tell it's hard to tell what christians believe because there's so many different kinds and it's and if, right. unless if you're explicit about the sarcasm that you're employing it's going to be hard for not someone to take that as a serious offense right it's, um crazy praying mantis says i really hope they don't Recently, the amount of Christians I've spoken to say that drowning babies is good and and outstanding by a powerful deity. Because they were all evil. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Of course, they Mm -hmm. have to say it's good. Otherwise, they'd be admitting that their God isn't good. And that's a good point, too. A lot of people are so... (laughs) They're so dependent on what someone else does as the basis for their morality that even if that person objectively does something terrible, they can't recognize that they have to they by authority have to say it's a good thing and that's cognitive dissonance Mm -hmm. 
it's it's a lack of intellectual honesty too yeah but yeah yeah and it, it's not mutually beneficial for us to be like hey you know if this authoritarian is doing this terrible thing it must be good and we see that even in politics so like um something to be mindful of thank you guys so much for the love that you guys have sent I mean, feel free to leave a comment if you want to have your uh comment discussed in this show Anyway, we're back to the main topic, which is more things change, the more things stay the same. Science versus religion. And we're talking about like if a cataclysmic world event happened that completely reset us back to like cave times, like how it did in Horizon Zero Dawn. The video game I'm playing right now, it's a really good game. Um, we would actually see a lot of different religions spring up. Brand new religions. No, no, I, I don't think it would be as Christianity would be nearly as popular as it is today as it would be after a world post 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 apocalyptic um turnaround and the interesting thing is science like as far as meteor meteorology um uh chemistry physics it would all be the same thing and we have different variables we might have different ways of representing these concepts and we might name them after different people but they would all be generally the same thing and this yeah. gives me a lot of hope because we've been around as just a planet or at least as space time is concerned for like 14 billion years there has to be other i think it's very likely that there's other um life in the universe that would be i see you later i see life in the universe would have to be some life would have to be more advanced than us i would imagine that'd be likely and i would imagine a common thread that we can talk about is science not our religions but just the concept of like hey this is combustion this is heat this is how things grow larry what do you think <laughs> Well, I was just going to say, we don't have any examples, you know, concrete you know, physical examples of, of anything supernatural like uh, ghosts or gods or angels or demons or any of that stuff. Yeah. But we do have one concrete example of, of life in the universe. Okay. And if we, if we can arise on this planet over the course of, uh, well, let's say four and a half billion years that this planet's been around, and no life on this planet at all for three and a half billion years. Um, well, a billion and a half, like three billion years of just single cell life. But life did arise and we know about it. And if it could right. happen here, why couldn't it happen somewhere else? I mean, yes. that's the basis of scientific research right now, just looking into the universe for the possibility of other life, because we know it happens. Yeah. And what if we're extremely late to the party? Like 14 billion years in? Like, you guys are a little bit late. <laughs> yeah. was, the whole universe was around for 10 billion before the sun. Yeah, it's just like, we figured this yeah. out billions of years ago, and yeah. you guys are still doing plastic? Wow, okay, well, have fun destroying your but planet. It, it does take quite a few generations of stars to get the heavy elements that we need to make our bodies uh, sure. and make living things. So, it, you know, the first... I don't know, five, six, seven billion years were necessary to get the, the engine going. As yeah. It were. Yeah. But there's Probably no reason to believe that other re, other life doesn't exist. Yeah. Yes. What do you got? Uh oh. Is that is that forbidden statue freezing him up again? Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's yeah. frozen in time. Yeah, He's frozen in space time. But hey, you know, that's a good excuse if the aliens come by. They're like, what? Well, it took you so long. It's like we were all on Zoom and we were waiting because of lag. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Dread Pirate, aliens think... froze Dale. <laughs> Dread Pirate, do you think it's likely that aliens exist? And George, I'm going to ask you the same question too. But like, do you think aliens or more advanced li hum or than human life in the, in the stars is possible? And what would be a good conversation topic if, if that did happen to be the case? Well, I, I certainly think it's, it's likely, it's plausible. Um, uh, whether or not they're more advanced than us is, you know, uh, I think more debatable. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah is the short answer. Do you, think, do you think it would be better to have a conversation with them about our religious points of view or science, or at least our understanding of science? Uh, well, I think the more practical uh, conversation would be, you know, through the language of science and mathematics. Mm. Um, you know, they, they could believe any kind of poppy cop as poppy, <laughs> poppy cock as we do, um, and it essentially results in the same sort of meaningless delusions that uh, people on Earth embrace. So, mm. George, I'm going to throw this out at you. Uh, do you think? that it's likely that there's more advanced life in terms of like engineering, science, et cetera, in the universe than what we have here right now. And then if that was- I believe, I believe, believe, you believe. That, <laughs> I believe that 
we are not alone in the universe as cool. intelligent creatures. And mm -hmm. I can't believe that there isn't anybody who, out there who is a hell of a lot smarter than we are. Okay. If that was true and they contacted us out of, out of a lark, would it be good to bring up religion like in the first couple of conversations or should we like stick to like science or like what? what? Well, I, uh, I guess uh, I have to go off on a limb here and say go for it. Just, because, just because they're smarter than we are doesn't mean that they're wise. You know, mm. they may have religion too, and it may be worse than ours. I mean, <laughs> I'm taught true. here in the land of the Christians, I'm taught that Jesus is love, and I'm surrounded by Christians who hate everybody who's not like them. Mm. So, uh, what can I say? I, I, I'm used to this, I grew up with it. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. Dale, what were you going to say before you were uh, the aliens and, uh, froze you up? Uh, I was going to say that I believe that you hold the belief that after hydrogen and helium were first created in the universe, that life was destined, or rather intelligent life was destined. Well, I'm glad you made that distinction. Uh, we may not be the only life in the universe, but we could be the only intelligent, or at least the first intelligent race. That was my we don't point know. Too. Uh, we don't know. But That's true. Uh, it's we just all conjecture at this point. And since we did come around, I would say right. that it was inevitable. It's like we but, have all uh, the pieces and we know right. the process and it's like no one started the process. So like if that's the case, then anywhere these pieces that? exist, no one started the process. I, I, could, I could see that as yeah. a fair thing. Well, look at it this way. I have models hey, that don't require a person. Way. Here's the big bang. Yeah. Here's the big bang. Your fist. Here's hydrogen. Okay. And at this point, Larry says that intelligent life is destined. And I consider a spider to be intelligent life okay. as far as okay. doing something. But yeah. Larry says that it was destined from this point. Well, uh, I said inevitable, life, so. which I guess we could say is the same. Mm, yeah. I wouldn't. Those okay. are different terms for very good reasons. All right. Well, I'd say inevitable because the laws of nature and the, and the matter that we have, um, well, gave us as an outcome. And yeah. if it gave us, could it really have changed? I'm not really much of a, a believer in free will. So I'm um, because of the, the laws of the universe and the actions of particles upon particles, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm saying that, yes, uh, humans uh, were inevitable. And if we can be created by the laws of nature and the actions on those particles, why not other uh, life maybe even an intelligent life and just to extend well, on larry's think? comment just to extend on larry's comment the idea of like how do i know that this doesn't take a, 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 a intelligent agent's intervention because we have these things called telescopes that let us see states of development across the universe that aren't always at the same place we can see red giants right. we can see white dwarfs we can see our sun we can yeah. see suns that are if older we, if we if and we see a star see... that's a billion light years away we're looking at a, a stage of development a billion years ago and right. two billion years and 10 billion years all the way back to like 13 billion years and each of these things that we're observing that take place don't have a person physically pushing atoms together and making new heavier elements or even like necessary see, we can we can see that it's not necessary so there can be mm -hmm. a very reasonable conclusion that there's not an agent involved in making heavier atoms this just is a natural process and we can see ah oh, if that's the case and this is the same subjects of nature that we're that we came about from then you know extend that to a different part of the universe and was like there's possibility that life could have originated mm -hmm. from there in the exact same way that I it would, did here i would recommend people look up the drake equation Ooh. What's the Drake equation? I, I'm asking that before George gets in, because <laughs> I want to know too. Oh, it's it's a it's a, an equation that a, a physicist named Drake came up with, uh, a scientist saying if you take these particular variables like the rate of star formation, the rate of uh, of stars of this particular class class being formed from that, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you plug in numbers for all mm -hmm. of those variables, which we are getting pretty good at. Uh, defining those numbers, then it will give you the number of intelligent races that are currently existing in the universe. Oh, that's very interesting. So that's interesting. The Drake equation, look it up. Um, I'm going to throw one last, uh, wait, actually, Dell, did you have something you would like to say? Oh, I was just saying, it seems like all of you folks are agreeing with the deist clockwork God. 
So yeah. once you have the hydrogen and you have the oxygen, mm -hmm. hydrogen and helium, then clock, then nothing else needs to be done in order for life to form. I mean, after all, life formed on the earth almost the instant that it was able to uh, survive. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm not, I'm not coming to the clockwork argument, but I am saying that you have a process that doesn't need a, a God to, right. to make it. And why yeah. would you, why would you like, possibly you need a God, God to make a clock? Necessary. Um, Occam's razor said, you know, cut off uh, any unnecessary entity. Assumptions or assumptions. Uh, yeah. He used the word entities, but uh, that's oh, okay. what he meant. Assumptions. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, so, well, George, I think would say from this point, God isn't necessary. And, and I would say like, that. no, I would say, See, why is God necessary? That's my point. No, no, no. George, that George. point, God is not necessary. I think you would agree with that. I wouldn't put that did, line there. I'd say, why are God's necessary, period. George, what was your point? Did God change the statue next to Dale? Yes. <laughs> Indeed, Makes sense. God did. Makes sense. Uh, Dred, did you have anything you wanted to throw in on this as well? Uh, you, well, just the, the, like I say, the, you know, the difference between the, the terms inevitable and destiny, uh, because destiny is a, a very charged word, hmm. um, and a lot of people associate destiny with uh, some sort of deistic, um, you know, like fate or that kind of thing. And so that's why I prefer not using destiny in any context that is outside of uh, a religious one. So yeah. you would agree that life was inevitable? Uh, yeah, given given the given the situation and our understanding of the universe, life clearly was inevitable because we're here. Of me. And again, I would still wouldn't say he's inferring that a God existed in order for that to happen. Not, not at all. No. Yeah, you can make that claim independent of whether or not a God exists, which is what yeah. our points are. Um, wow, I've converted all of you guys. Wow, it's like he's not listening oh. to us whatsoever. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we bring Dale to all the cool parties. <laughs> Larry, I have this weird idea that if we were contacted by an intelligent life form, whether they were more smarter than us or less smarter than us or if they just had the ability to do that i would think that's like substantially impressive i would be one happy that i could talk to them but two terrified that they have the ability to talk to us because every single example of human to human interaction has been whoever is the more technologically advanced group of people will end up taking over the the inferior group and we've we've seen yeah. that with us every single time to the point where I'd be terrified to start a relationship with anybody <laughs> Even the most extreme long distance versions. So I would hope that if this, if this, if this show wavelength goes out into space, that they would figure out a way how to approach, you know, as terrified species as us to, to demonstrably prove that there's no harm in their intent and that they are really just doing like Star Trek. Just like, hey man, we're just we're mm -hmm. just going out. We're just trying to figure out what's going on here. We're letting you yeah. know there's a greater galactic relationship that's available to you. Just that's right. it. That's it. I just yeah. hope the first aliens that contact us are Vulcans. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a, I thought they were the bad guys. Aren't they the bad no, guys? No, Vulcans are, are good, and they're they're emotionless. They're, they try to raise oh, themselves with, without him without emotion. I and they came Klingons. to us originally, according to Star Trek Enterprise, to be able to give us. Steps, stepping stones to to get into space and to be able to use the warp drive well and and to communicate with other species. Okay, so they had our best interests at heart, which is uh, thing. for everyone that might be Star Trek impressed. Would you say that's the best example of how to reach out to other organizations in the universe and be like, hey, listen, here's who we are. Uh, don't be worried about us. I'm going to throw it out to uh, Dread. You look up to me like a person who's seen an episode of Star Trek, at least by that hat and, and facial hair. Would you say that's a good example of how to reach out to people? I, I would. I would think so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you want you want to. Um, yeah. I mean, if if you've got a, a clearly advanced civilization that's come to your your planet, um, you'd want to be there, hat in hand, to say, "Hey, look." Um, Thanks for coming. Um, uh, you know, 
<laughs> yeah, let's get some space Canadians on this. That'd be fantastic. Teach directive. Yeah, <laughs> George, what do you think? I, Is this... what, what if they? What if they? Trick or what treat. if they just want to come come here to sell us pickle ice cream? <laughs> yeah, like what if it's a District Nine situation where it's just like, hey, we're refugees. Our our planet and hey, our solar system. What if they're Galactic JWs? Oh, oh no! Well, hey, knock, I would love knock, to do, knock, I knock. would love to do SC on them too. Yeah, I'd love I'd love. And mm. by the way, SC. Wait a minute, you guys are throwing around examiner. terms that I don't understand. So, Socratic Jehovah examination, Witnesses. street epistemology. Yeah, yeah. Oh, JW is Jehovah Witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would love to have a conversation. I, I, I was with just them. thinking too. I, I got a bit of a joke. Go for it. Go for um, it. What if you if you get an email from a JW that says, or if you I, I yeah. ruined the joke. If you get an email with a knock knock joke, it's a JW working from home. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> it, I, the way I heard it was, if you get an email from a JW, you don't open it because they're working from home. Yeah, but it, has, <laughs> it didn't say anything about knock knock. Okay, that was okay. better than the tuna fish. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would. Uh, Dale, what do you think is the best example in sci-fi literature of two different uh, interplanetary groups coming together amicably? Well, if science fiction teaches us anything, if any alien lands on our planet, you should accept this. They are your god. Well, no. Yeah, I, would no, hope that, I think I hope God that is too loaded a word. Teaches, that's what Star Trek teaches us. If you have any alien that has that kind of ability, they will impersonate themselves as Apollo or Osiris or, Jesus. or some other past God. It, it's, been, it's been played out in science fiction literature mm -hmm. and movies and TV over and over again. If so they're me... that far advanced as science teaches us, they are indistinguishable from magic or supernatural powers. So I'm going to throw yeah. out one thing. It, it alludes to what Dale is saying, but also shows a positive side to it as well. And it's the most classic example that we have. And that's Clark Kent as Superman, right? He came from another planet. He was raised as an old fashioned Southern that's boy, Kentucky with all the good examples, but he is looked up to as like this guy who can walk on water, he can fly through air, has laser vision, he can do so many great things, but deep down he has the personhood of America or like the personhood of just a good upbringing. And so his good values trump his powers. He's still seen as like a good idyllic human being, despite the fact that he can do all these super things. He's still a super man. What do you think, Dale? Uh, first of all, Superman is not... Ah, oh, man, again? <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, he gets for talking solid. bad about yeah. Superman. You never start a sentence with "Superman is not." It doesn't work. Superman is anything he wants to be. It's, that's how his powers yeah, work. Exactly. <laughs> Dale doesn't know what happened. And yeah, Dale, Dale you're locked know. up again. You're, you're okay. frozen. Okay. Uh, we got. Okay, okay. Oh, Dale, go for it again. Back. Go for it again. Go for okay. it again. Dale. Superman is fantasy, not science fiction. There's a movie that just came out recently that what happens if Superman comes to the earth and he's all bad? Uh, yeah. Does anybody know the title of that movie? Red Sun or Red the Red Sun. I mean, there's a lot of variations of bad Superman. There's Metal Superman. There's Apocalypse Superman. I mean, no, there was a movie uh, where the guy the guy lands on Earth from another planet. He has powers, but he's bad, saying? and you, you're going to have to worship him. But that's fantasy. But science fiction most often it delves into fantasy too. But if somebody comes from another planet that far away, they're gonna have technology that's indistinguishable from supernatural well, power. They actually come here, yeah, they've covered incredible distances uh, and should be able to uh, share that knowledge. With us, which or is if they came as a baby. We should, we should and talk about. <laughs> in an ejection pod, it, it, it could, it, it's, it's as, science fiction as it is fantasy at that point like uh well it, 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 classically it might have been comes, more go for it go for it yeah. yeah all of you atheists are going to convert to theism whenever the aliens come because they will be able to do supernatural uh miracles and you won't be able to deny that they happen they will well, make an, people grow legs or fly yeah i would still doubt it um in the in the yeah, world where i, I know it. i can be con confused <laughs> 
and I can still be mistaken, I would still need more proof of something being supernatural, or well, at least what a redefinition. What would it take for you to believe in a in a in a? That's God not my problem. That's the person out. who's trying to promote supernatural things. Well, out. can I answer that? I'm going to quote Matt Dillahunty from the Atheist Experience in Austin, Texas. Says, "I don't know what it would take for God to, for me to be convinced of that a God exists." But the God would know if he knows yeah. everything. He knows exactly what it would take to convince me. Why so that's now God's problem, and it's not your problem right. to try to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. We are at exactly. the bottom of the show, guys. Thank you, Matt Dilla, honey. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dread, where can we find your stuff at? Well, we are streaming right now. It's uh, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, and so you can find the live stream at Mind Pirate on YouTube, M I N D P Y R A T E. Cool, uh, George. Good luck with the the romance tierce that's about to happen. Uh, I hope everyone stays safe and well and happy. And <laughs> cool. Um, How Jesus Did It dot com. What's that all about? Dale? Oh, that's that's old news. Let me tell you about this guy here. All right. This is Harry Byrne, and this year is the hundredth anniversary of women having the federal right to vote in America. And this man from Nyota, Tennessee, cast that deciding vote. Oh, uh, this sculpture I did several years ago. That's very good. Nyota, right wow. next to me. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it cool. is. Athens is pretty close to you too. And then so I'm in Athens. Yeah. I'm in Athens. And then Larry, uh, before we close out, you can find me at Let's Chat on YouTube. Just search Let's Chat. You'll find all my videos where I do a hobby called Street Epistemology or Socratic Examination. I ask people what they believe and why they believe it and have really nice, fun conversations about topics that are normally thought to be hard to talk about, even with strangers, with friends, etc. Check it out. It's actually kind of interesting. Larry, take us out. Oh, no. And be sure to visit my blog at digitalfreethought.com. No. Good. Uh, good. For our radio show archives, our atheist songs, and many articles on the atheist subjects. Uh, my book is called Atheism What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. Um, if you're having trouble uh, leaving religious beliefs behind, check out recoveringfromreligion.org. Uh, and if you'd like to listen to our prior shows, of course, they're available on podcasts everywhere, iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, et cetera, et cetera. If you have any questions for the show, uh, leave them below in the comments, or you can uh, send emails to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. If you're watching the show on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe and be notified when new episodes are posted. And remember, everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it and enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 7 o'clock on WZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Right,